Now, according to a study conducted by scientists based in Korea, Canada and in Germany, the Arctic Ocean's ice caps will disappear in summer by the 2030s. That's a decade earlier than previously thought. Scientists say this is set to happen no matter how aggressively we reduce carbon pollution, which drives global warming. Well, to tell us a bit more, Julia Seeger joins me now here in the studio from our science desk. And Julia, first of all, just tell us what's in this study. Well, first of all, it's a simulation based on observational data that was collected from 1979 to 2019. And the result indeed indicates that the first ice-free September in the Arctic could happen as early as 2030, regardless of emissions uh, scenarios. So when scientists say that we're talking about uh, the Arctic Ocean being ice-free, what do they mean? First of all, they're referring to what we call sea ice. So we're not talking here about glaciers or ice sheets. We're talking about sea ice, which is um, ice water that uh, that has consolidated and is floating on uh, the water. And it tends to retreat, it doesn't tend, but it retreats in, in summer and it reforms in uh, the winter. And September is indeed uh, the time where the, uh, the ice reaches its annual minimum. So this is why scientists were looking at September <clears throat> specifically. When they say it's ice free, there again, they don't mean that there's not gonna be any ice anymore at all. They're referring to a scientific threshold where this sea ice would only cover about seven percent of the Arctic Ocean. Uh, but this would already be devastating, of course, for the environment. Now, researchers estimate that the decline of the ice is directly due to greenhouse gas emissions, of course, but there are other factors as well to, uh, to take into consideration, aerosols, solar and volcanic activity as well. Uh, and Julia, tell us, is it is it just this study or are there others that have also reached the same conclusion? Well, there's another study from mm. Sweden that came out on Tuesday and they were actually investigating currents in the deep Arctic and they found that it's much warmer than we previously thought and also closer to the surface and it's directly uh, interacting with uh, the, the sea ice. They also say that the IPCC was way too optimistic in its projection and what's interesting is that they attribute this discrepancy in the data to the fact that we don't have as much access to Russian data right now. And as you can see, Russia is englobing most of the Arctic and they stopped doing the explorations since the beginning of the Ukrainian war. And Julia, how much of the surface area of sea ice has already shrunk in the Arctic? So the it's re, it's been reduced by 9% in the winter and by 48% in the summer. Wow. And we know that compared to the satellite pictures that we have from 1979. We're still using satellite imagery to try to monitor the situation of the sea ice uh, with, uh, you know, uh, satellites like Cryosat 2 and Copernicus, for instance. Uh, and also, so maybe we'll be able to see this, but uh, there is a huge difference indeed uh, here in the Arctic sea ice, uh, the difference between winter, of course, and summer in the Arctic, in the Antarctic uh, as well. But once again, this is sea ice that is supposed to retreat also in the summer. And Julia, I suppose the big question is, what are the consequences of this ice melting? So what's interesting is that the melting of the sea ice, we could think that it would make the, the sea level rise, but it's actually, it doesn't cause directly the, the sea levels to rise, but it does have negative consequences. And the most negative consequence is the fact that it, in, the, in the summer, it has a very important role to have because it reflects the sunlight. And so this, it, it functions like a mirror and this mirror is becoming smaller and smaller. So it's reflecting less sunlight. And, be, and it, because of that, the Arctic is becoming warmer. Because the Arctic is becoming Coming warmer, it triggers extreme weather events, especially in mid-latitudes, like for instance, uh, heat waves and wildfires. And on a more global level, it can trigger also the melting, and it is triggering the melting of the permafrost and uh, Greenland ice sheets, which in that case do trigger an increase in the sea level. All right, really serious stuff. Thanks very much indeed for coming in to highlight that for us. Julia Seeger for us there.